So, in the preface of his Kaogao Shinsho, Shinran continues by saying, If one is still covered with the net of doubt in the present existence, he will have to transmigrate again for myriads of kalpas. Veritable indeed are the true words of Amidas, embracing and not forsaking, and the true teaching which is unequaled and rare. Let us hear with reflection. Let us not hesitate to trust. So in a sense, this is his continuation of um, encouraging us to entrust in Amida Buddha's profound, inconceivable primal vow to not have doubt in Amida, to not have hesitancy in accepting his saving power, to believe the good, true teaching, the teaching of Amida's salvation law originating in his vow, the vow promising to save sentient beings through the name or Nembutsu or Namo Mirabutsu. So when he says, let us hear with reflection, he's asking us to think. This isn't a blind faith kind of proposition. He's asking us to think, to go beyond thinking, to entrust, to entrust in a concept system and a worldview and a way of thinking about reality that does in fact resonate with our deepest needs. And he himself, having experienced this entrusting, this Shinjin, he goes on to express his joy and gives the reason why he wrote the Kaogao Shinsho. This was his motive. He said, How happy am I, Gutoku Shaku Shinran, to have now been able to meet with the holy scriptures from India and the commentaries by Chinese and Japanese masters, which are difficult to meet, and to have already been able to hear their teachings, which are difficult to hear. So back to the point about his humility when he calls himself Gutoku, this phrase refers to himself as being ignorant, as being sinful, as being powerless. And unless we get to that point where we can see ourselves as powerless to attain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, we won't have the, the basis for entrustment in Amita's vow. So that's the dilemma. As long as we think we can manage to attain enlightenment through our own self-power, uh, we won't be oriented toward the profound primal vow. And that's okay. It's okay to pursue through doubt, through effort. But at some point, we realize that in this particular body, in this particular life, we can't become perfect. We can't fulfill all the bodhisattva vows, all the bodhisattva elements of practice, all the six paramitas in a perfect way. But Shinran, having experienced this entrusting after having recognized his own powerlessness, experiences joy in having met the teaching. And we see throughout Buddhism this notion, we see it certainly in the Lotus Sutra, where the Buddha talks about it being hard to meet with the teaching, hard to meet, hard to meet with the teaching. The notion that it's hard to be born as a human. And now that we're born as a human, it's hard to meet the teaching. But here we are, we have a great basis for joy because we have been born in human form. We have the ability to appreciate what has been left to us by Sakyamuni Buddha, by Nagarjuna, by Vasubandhu, by all the Chinese masters, by Shinran, by Dogen, by Nishiren, all the teachings. and. Shinran finishes out his preface by saying, In believing reverently in the teaching, practice, and enlightenment of the true teaching, I have realized particularly the Tathagata's deep benevolence. Hereupon I express my joy over what I have heard and praise what I have received. And of course, when he's talking about the Tathagata's deep benevolence, he's talking about Amida Buddha, the service that he did as the Bodhisattva Dharmakara. 
the kind actions that he performed over eons of time to create the mass of merit that then can be transferred to us for our own benefit. And when Amida calls, and Shinran has heard this call, Amida calls, what we receive is faith in the other power, that there is a power in the universe beyond our own efforts, beyond our own contrivance, that can pull us out from the, the mire of suffering that we so often experience in this life and give us an assurance of birth in his pure land. So I'll just finish this little video with a repetition of the three verses that I, that I commented upon as follows. If one is still covered with the net of doubt in the present existence, he will have to transmigrate again for myriads of kalpas. Veritable indeed are the true words of Amida's embracing and not forsaking, and the true teaching which is unequaled and rare. Let us hear with reflection. Let us not hesitate to trust. How happy am I, Gutoku Shaku Shinran, to have now been able to meet with the holy scriptures from India and the commentaries by Chinese and Japanese masters, which are difficult to meet, and to have already been able to hear their teachings, which are difficult to hear. In believing reverently in the teaching practice and enlightenment of the true teaching, I have realized particularly the Tathagata's deep benevolence. Hereupon I express my joy over what I have heard and praise what I have received.